hi everybody and uh, welcome back to uh, writing tips with me. Um, so what I'm going to talk about right now is uh, today is um, um, really a very brief introduction to how to make a short um, a presentation with a visual aid. So um, um, so this is uh, um, any of my classes I require something like this so probably you have you are writing some kind of a research paper and I've asked you to uh, give a maybe a five to ten minute uh, a presentation with a visual aid is usually how I like to word it so what that means is you need to have some kind of a presentation behind you while you talk so that um, um, you know the PowerPoint which is what you're looking at on my, on my screen right now is you know my uh, my um, uh, program of choice but of course, uh, there are other ones out there, and those are fine as well. So any kind of um, uh, presentation software, um, but PowerPoint is really straightforward and pretty easy to use. So uh, um, um, uh, what I'm going to do is just sort of walk you through how simple this is. So, so first of all, <laughs> this PowerPoint that I've made is uh, going to break most of the rules that I'm going to give you about how to make a presentation. And that's because there are different kinds of presentations you might make with a visual aid. Um, uh, teaching um, uh, a course is different. Teaching like a lecture is different from presenting uh, um, on a research topic, which is what you're all doing. Those are really different things. Uh, and so sometimes I think I think a, a pitfall a lot of students fall into is they they kind of copy what they are seeing their professors do in um, in in lectures, and that can be a mistake because uh, that's really a very different animal altogether. Different kinds of information you're trying to present usually a very different time restraint. Um, all kinds of reasons why that's not um, uh, that's not a um, um, a. A, a great idea. And so what I'm going to do here is give you some sort of tips on, on how you might do that. So so first of all, um, uh, uh, I'll come back to that in just a second, right? So first of all, have, have a title slide. So this is a slide that's going to basically be there. The only part of the presentation you're going to show this for is your introducing yourself and the name of your paper or your idea. You don't want to get to, I even make this mistake sometimes too, you don't want to start getting ahead of yourself with your title slide and start talking about your paper or your thesis or your ideas. Um, really the, the, the title slide is like up behind you while you're getting introduced and I'll, I'll, I'll likely introduce you when you're giving your, your presentation. If you were giving this at say a conference, um, um, that would be uh, you getting introduced by like the host of the session that you're in. And that's right. It's just to tell people it has your name on it. It has your affiliation. So if you're giving a conference presentation, it would say, you know, Southern Connecticut State University, right? Because it would show your your your, your university that you're associated with. Um, um, you know, later on, and if you were doing this in graduate school, you might have uh, you might have like um, um, some funding agencies listed listed there. Let's say the work you were presenting on was a National Science Foundation granted thing. You might have that there. Um, but it's just there to give some information about who you are and the title of your paper. Don't get ahead of yourself talking um, on that slide. Before we, you'll notice I'm keeping this in in um, production mode. Um, before we get started on how you actually should construct an argument, let me just say a word. Um, um, I have a little bit more about this later, but I'm going to mention it here too. When you are giving a presentation, you are communicating the uh, information in your research paper. It's really, you're doing the exact same thing you're doing in the paper itself. So when you write a research paper, when we te we're teaching you how to write a research paper in, in uh, uh, undergraduate, the idea is that you're sort of mimicking what would eventually be a kind of research paper you might publish in, say, an academic journal. Um, so the ultimate goal of any research project, the last step always, is the communication of knowledge. There's no point in doing it if you don't communicate it. Right? What's the point of doing research if you never tell anybody about it? There's different ways of presenting, of, of uh, communicating that information. One of them is, is, is in a written form, and then one of them is in an oral form, right? a place where you're going to just literally tell people what your what your research was and what you found. And that's what you're doing here, right? So keep that in mind as you do this. That's the goal. You're communicating the same information that you did in your paper, but in a different format. And that means you need to think a little bit differently about it. So some basic pointers about your actual visual aid 
and how you can think about um, um, producing your PowerPoint or, or Prezi or whatever of program you end up using, right? So unlike I'm doing here, use lots of visuals and a few words. Like I said, this is a different kind of a document you're looking at here because this is a teaching document, not a presentation document. Um, I think the best presentations are lots of visuals. It might be pictures, figures, tables, graphs, right? Things that you've made for your paper that you want to include in there. And, uh, and, and really only a few words. And the way I like to think about words is um, if you put them in, say, a bullet point or something like that, the point of a couple of words on your slide is more to remind you as the presenter what you wanted to say about that slide. That's how I use them anyway, right? You can also, of course, have like, you know, uh, index cards with you or something like that if that helps you keep yourself organized. Uh, but I like to just throw a couple of words up on the slide and it reminds me, oh, this is some of the detail I wanted to give about this topic at this point. Um, uh, and so you don't want your viewers to be reading when they're supposed to be listening to what you're saying uh, and the argument that you're making, the case you're making for your data. Um, so uh, try not to bog down your viewers with lots of words. So I would never want you to have a, a slide like the one you're looking at. Use this as a negative example. Way too much text on this slide. So you might have an image, you might have a figure, something like that. Um, um, fewer slides tend to be better. This is a philosophical question to some extent. I have, I, I know people who really like to have a lot of slides and you know, oh, I have a slide for every 30 seconds of my presentation. That's a lot. I think for a, um, um, for a, for a five to 10, this is supposed to be a minute presentation. For a short presentation like you all are doing here, five, 10, maybe even a typical conference presentation is 15 or 20 minutes. That's not very long. Um, um, I, I often go by a rule of about two minutes a slide. That's my rough kind of rule, but it varies hugely, right? You have to practice. Um, some slides are going to take longer than others. Some are only going to be up for a few seconds, and others might be up for three or four minutes if you have something really complex that you're starting to describe that's on that slide. Um, so for a presentation like this, though, four or five slides is, is probably plenty. You do not need to have 15 or 20 slides. If you have that many slides, you're going to go over time by a lot. You're, ne you're never going to do that in five to ten minutes. Um, and you want to you want to give your slides a nice, consistent look and feel. And I've got here, honestly, PowerPoint's design tips feature is pretty good. So I um, I, I kind of love this. is a new feature they have in um, some. Um, uh, so let's go back here in, in in PowerPoint. This little design ideas tab here, and it just like makes these like nice. Uh, you got to play around with them, of course. These nice little like, you know, really simple, just uh, kind of thing. And then and then you go from there. So you start with a with with a, um, with a, with a template like this, and then you can play around with it. You can go in there and you can still move around the text. You can change the uh, change the font to something else. You can. Uh, uh, you can add more colors, right? And it'll continue to give you new, interesting little uh, little ideas. And then the, the idea would be that you, okay, so we just picked a nice orange one. So maybe like, right, you know, you're keeping a nice, so orange is going to be our theme here. Something that, uh, uh, something that that's going to uh, uh, draw your reader in and keep them entertained. I will say, um, I know that it's like maybe cheating to use these design ideas. But I have I have designed hundreds of PowerPoint presentations in my career, and uh, it it used to take me many 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 hours just to do this basic like make a visually appealing slide, and now this sort of just does it for you. So I sort of love it. So don't feel don't feel afraid to use the tools that the that the uh, software gives you. Um, if you want to just sort of dive in there and design it yourself from scratch. Go for it. If you've got a bet, if you think you made something that looks better, more visually appealing, more appropriate than what they do, they offer to you, go for it. I, I don't want to. I don't want to stop you from that. But okay. Um, so uh, those are our basic tips. Now for how you actually structure a short presentation about a research project. So I'm assuming you're giving a presentation of somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 minutes here, and you've got a basic research paper that's got a quite uh, a, a quite standard structure. Um, um, so, uh, first of all, start with your thesis. So your first slide, after your title slide, should just tell us what your thesis is. What's your research question? What's the question you're trying to answer with your paper? And that's it. Tell us, you know, and then you get to, you get to, so that's all, the, that's all that's on the slide. Tells you what your thesis is, maybe an image to go with it. 
and then you get to talk about it. You give yourself a couple of minutes to say, here's what my thesis is, maybe, maybe a little bit about why you're interested in that or why your specializations um, make you qualified to answer this question, whatever. Next is you need a slide that tells us your method. So how your method, your methodology is, how are you actually going to answer your question? So is this a scientific sort of a paper where your method might be, I'm going to do some experimental protocol and I'm going to use hypothesis testing? Or is, it a, um, is this more of a historical kind of approach where your method might be, I'm looking at these archives or I'm reading these books or these articles to give me information about this. I'm exploring this literature. And then finally, you're going to present your findings. What did you find out? Did you answer your question? What was the answer to that question? Was it what you expected? Was it not what you expected? Whatever, right? Give us some detail about your findings. Pay attention here to what I call, and I'm gonna have a separate video for this, that's a whole separate video um, focused on this eventually, uh, what I like to call linkage. Linkage is, um, a, is there a clear through line from your research question to your method to your findings? So any reasonable person should be able to see your research question they should be able to look at your method and understand why and how that method is appropriate for answering that question. And they should be able to look at your findings and understand how those findings are actually answering the research question and actually were produced by the method. And if you've done that, you have a strong research paper. Really, honestly, if you can do that, if you have strong linkage between these three elements, you're gonna have a strong research paper. You're gonna have a convincing research paper, and and uh, be, but it needs to be logical. A person needs to be able to listen to those three parts and see how they mesh together to make a single story. Um, so this is not only true for your presentation, but for a paper, per, a, a written paper version of this uh, uh, of your of your same project. Um, so uh, um, um, just remember, a presentation is a way of communicating information, just like <laughs> your paper. Oops. Um, catching typos as I, uh, as I, as I do this. Uh, so just like your paper, it's just an alternative way of communicating that information. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse than a written version. Uh, that really depends on the data and the amount of time, but it is, a, it is another opportunity to uh, communicate uh, um, your findings, your research, your topic to an audience. Um, and uh, and, it's, and it's, it's really an entirely different and useful way of doing that from, from writing. Usually though, you have less time and space in the presentation than in a paper, so you need to find ways to streamline your message down to the basics. So that's why I've given you this like three part title, I guess four part title, thesis, method, findings, right? And then you can you can expand that out if you need to. You can add, you know, your, your findings um, uh, part section can have multiple slides, right? If, especially if you're getting into a more complex topic, um, but basically you want to break it down into those little constituent parts um, because it's really typical. So for instance, I mean, just to give you an idea of how this boils down, for an undergraduate paper, you might write a 10-page paper and get five to 10 minutes to present. For, a, for, a, for an academic article um, that might be 30 pages, single-spaced, you're going to typically give that at a conference in 15 to 20 minutes, it's, which, is, which is really tightened down. Again, it's like, that's like, if you were to read that out loud, it's probably seven or eight pages of written text. So you have to somehow reduce your message by, a quarter, by, by three quarters, you know, to, to a third to, to uh, two thirds to three quarters. And, and then even at the, the largest length, for instance, like a dissertation, which might be two or three or 400 pages, um, uh, normally you're gonna have a defense where you get an hour to make that case, right? So again, so even, even more extreme. Um, um, so, that, so typically, um, a, a oral presentation has to be tighter and more streamlined than a written presentation. So this is gonna be the challenge for you is how to take that uh, quite complex bit of writing you've done and convert it into uh, um, a short presentation like this one. All right. Thanks, everybody.